you can have a lie-in on Sundays when all the theists have to go to church. You don't have to have crucifix reminders about yourself, about your home. I've never quite understood that. If the crucifix was, or the cross, was the instrument of death for your prophet, why would you want to have one around as a constant reminder? I mean, if he'd been shot by a magnum, would you then worship a pistol? Or if he died of an ingrowing toenail, would you then wear one as a brooch? Because you'll never be in church, you won't have to worry about carrying heavy pocketfuls of change to clatter into the collection box just to impress your peers. My theist friend keeps telling me that if only I would repent my sins, I still may be able to sit at the feet of Jesus when I die. Why would I want to do that? I don't like feet anyway, I think they're horrible. And I certainly wouldn't want to sit at his or anybody else's for that matter. Especially if they've got a septic toenail. Ew. You never have to worry about casting your seeds on the ground. For those of you that do worry, try catching them in a tissue instead. You don't have to get down on your knees in front of anyone. Unless you want to. You never have to confess to anyone that you've been a naughty boy. Unless you're into the master and slave scenario or something. You don't have to hate any particular section of society just because your church says you should. As atheists, we know that when we die, that's it. Kaput. Finito. Sayonara. But it doesn't have to be a sad thing. It just means that we can enjoy and celebrate the life that we have here on Earth. And we don't have to keep second guessing and worrying about that magical eternal life that we're going to go on to. Or maybe even the other place with all its fire and brimstone. You can be a good person all by yourself without having to worry whether your good deeds are being counted as brownie points towards some supposed eternal life policy. You can marvel at the beauty of nature without having to praise anyone for it. When you're hungry you can sit right down to eat. You don't have to sit hands clasped and eyes shut mumbling to some invisible man on the ceiling and thanking him for your food even though you know that you went to the supermarket and bought it all yourself just this morning. You never have to host coffee mornings or attend garden fates just to help the church roof fund. Still on the subject of money, how come they're too hard up to buy roof tiles when their leaders are living in some of the finest palaces ever built? Theoretically, the Pope has control over all the Catholic Church's earthly goods. But of course he wouldn't use it, because I think he would lose credibility if he went on a huge spending spree around Harrods. The Archbishop of Canterbury apparently earns around 60000 a year, which is not a fortune, but it's a lot more than most, and certainly a lot more than Jesus ever earned. He also gets to live here for free. What was that about it being easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it was for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven? If an atheist wants to get married in a registry office, it can cost as little as a hundred pounds. But if they want to go for the church do and have the three V's, that is the vows, the vicar and the venue, it's going to be at a minimum of 320 pounds. So, a bit of difference there, but they've got to pay for their roof somehow. You never have to starve your body for huge chunks of time just to please your church. You can wear mixed fibres, eat shellfish, or even be a happy homosexual and never have to worry about divine retribution. We can drink wine and eat crackers, preferably with cheese, and we don't have to go to church 
and eat them pretending that they are the blood and the flesh of a dead man. I mean, how weird and barbaric is that? We don't have to belong to any religion, and yet we still get religious holidays off work. So that's a bonus. I'll have um, chocolate buttons with my Easter eggs, please. Easter, now that's a strange one, isn't it? It's supposed to be, it's supposed to celebrate Jesus becoming a zombie, but it also includes eggs and chicks and rabbits and God knows what else, lots of chocolate. And it can happen any time between March and May, depending on which calendar you're looking at and whereabouts in the world you are. It's what the church calls a movable feast. I wish they'd move Christmas to July. I could do with another week off in the summer. You don't have to sit on a hard wooden seat for hours pretending to be interested in the sermon being spouted at you by the chap in front in a frock. You never have to learn the words to sing along to the dirge that is called hymns. And hallelujah to that. Oh.